Science. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now, if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing. That will help me out immensely. Thank you very much. Now, today we're going to have a short one. We're going to look at a, another triple five timer implementation here. Uh, this is probably one of the more useful circuits. Now, most of us have all seen that little flashing LED that we see on the dash car board of a car. Uh, when the car is often parked to let you know that there is an active alarm and some of them are dummy ones which they don't actually have an alarm installed but they still have the flasher. This is exactly what this circuit does. Now we'll notice straight off that we're using a 7 triple five. Now there's a reason for that. One, the quiescent current of this uh, particular configuration of this circuit here when the LED is off is around 60 microamps. Now with a normal triple five timer that's going to be more like two milliamps. Which you may be thinking that's not really a significant difference but you've got to look at it over when this thing is turned on for like you know 12, 15 hours at a time. Um, of course the LED when that comes on is going to draw a little bit more current probably about 510 MA but it's not going to make your battery and your car go flat overnight, put it that way. Uh, and the second reason is, is because with pin 5, well, we don't actually have to tie it to ground via a 10 nanofarad capacitor as you would the 555 counterpart. And that's according to the data sheet. However, I've tested it both with a 7555 and a 555, and the capacitor is not needed in either, either implementation, so it doesn't matter. Anyhow, moving on. It's configured in the standard or stable mode, so we've got R1, R2 and C1. The values of this capacitors and resistors here give us an on time of roughly four and a half seconds and an off time of roughly 60, 60 odd milliseconds, something like that. And we'll notice that the LED is connected with its cathode to the output. So when the output is high for that four and a half seconds, the LED is off. When it is low for that 60 uh, odd milliseconds, the LED is allowed to illuminate. Now, you may be saying, well, why do that? Well, it gives this impression of, you know, one, two, three, four, five, blip. One, two, three, four, five, blip. Uh, as most of them do. Um, some have a quicker off time, uh, dead time, than five seconds. Could be like two, three seconds. but. I have seen ones that are off for five seconds and then it blips once and then another five seconds later it blips again. And that's exactly what this does. Um, there's not much else to talk about the circuit except that I've got a 220 ohm and a 5.1 volt Zena here on the supply rail to keep this uh, supply voltage here at 5.1 volt roughly. The only reason I'm doing that is just to keep the timer stable over varying battery voltage. Um, also, it uh, DC decouples uh, this circuit from the rest of the car. And we'd use an 1800 MCD LED, uh, that's its apparent brightness, a red one, something along, along those lines, a high, high brightness LED. And as it's only going to be at 5.1 volt, this dropper resistor doesn't need to be any greater than 2K2 at 1800 MCD. So that's the circuit, there's not much else to talk about it. So let's have a look at the breadboard implementation. So here's the breadboard implementation as we saw the LED just flashed. Now ignore these two LEDs up here, they don't do anything. But as we can see the LED is flashing once roughly every five seconds. Isn't that neat? Now I don't have the Zener diode connected to the circuit here because I don't have one. I did have one, but when I went to use it in another experiment earlier, a couple of weeks ago, it snapped in half on, on me, so I don't have it anymore. And I don't have any replacements. But what I'm doing is I'm just running it on a regulated power supply at roughly 5 volts. So that will uh, imitate that diode. Um, it's not really important for the purposes of demonstration. Now, that's it. 
That's the entire circuit. However, there's a problem. If we were to connect this circuit as it is on a PCB, obviously, into a car and find a constant 12 volt power source, there's plenty under the dash there, the problem is the circuit is going to be active the whole entire time that the battery is connected to the vehicle. Meaning that this little LED, imagine it was red because I don't have one of them either, but this little LED will be flashing away once every five seconds whilst you're driving, which could become very annoying and somewhat dangerous because it's distracting. So well, we'll, we'll need to implement a way of turning the circuit off when the ignition is on. We could simply put an inline switch, but that means you'd have to remember to A, turn it back on when you turn the vehicle off and B, turn it off whilst you're driving. That's awkward. So let's look at an electronic way we can do it. So this is my idea of how we could do it electronically. Now, I haven't built it yet, so I don't know if it works, but I'm going to assume for all intents and purposes it is. All we've got is two MPN transistors here. The first one here is connected via ground to pin one of the 7555 timer. Uh, so that's its common or ground pin. So that'll disconnect uh, the path to ground from the IC so it actually turns the IC off when there's no base bias voltage. Now we want it on when the ignition is off of the car so we've got this pull up resistor of 10k to the, the 12 volt rail before the 5.1 volt zener diode so this will go to the battery we've got this 100 ohm resistor going to the collector of the second MPN transistor and I haven't marked that value but it's a 10k as well um, I'll just write that in 10k and when the ignition switch is on or set to the accessories position for instance, which is where you'd wire it. This transistor is allowed to turn on, which brings up the path to ground and steals the base current from this transistor here, effectively turning the IC off. And once the ignition switch is set to the lock position and there's no voltage here at this base anymore, well, this base allows, is allowed to turn on, which turns the transistor on, which turns the timer on. And there you go, a simple electronic solution to that problem. So now I need to build that part of the circuit up and test it. And there I have the switch circuitry installed now. I've changed the 680K resistor out there in the oscillator just to make the flash rate a little bit faster for testing purposes. It's, it's too slow, wait five seconds. Um, got this fly wire connected to a 10K resistor of the base of the second transistor. I've got the second supply set to 12.1 volt there. You can see the other one's set to 5.2. It's only because I don't have the Zener diode. Um, so it's running off of two separate regulated power supplies, but it will still work um, off the main power supply. If I had a Zener diode, right, so all I've got to do is touch this fly wire to the incoming 12 volt power supply here, as long as this resistor doesn't short against the transistor. So the easy way to do that is to connect it to this resistor here. And as we can see, the LED stops flashing. And that's exactly the operation we want. And as soon as this supply is disconnected from the first transistor, it starts flashing again. Isn't that neat? So what about current draw? So with my multimeter in the milliamp scale going in series with the 5.1 volt supply rail, we can see it's only about 70 70 odd microamps there until the LED comes on and it shoots up because well this doesn't range quick enough. I could measure it on an oscilloscope but um, we can see that it's really nothing much when it's in the, low, the high state when the LED is off. Now if I connect this across the positive 12 volt supply well obviously the current from the IC's perspective is going to be zero because it's off. So we can see that this IC is now no longer drawing any current. But if the engine was running, this wouldn't make a difference. I'm not sure about the transistor circuitry over here, how much that's drawing, so that's the next thing I'm going to measure. 
So measuring um, from the 12 volt power supply rails perspective to the transistor, which is the only one that's turned on, we're looking at more of 1.1 MA. Uh, however, that's still a small amount of current draw, and uh, if you add the 70 odd microvolts to that, that's about 1.17 milliamps, uh, not including what the LED is consuming, which is still reasonable enough, I suppose. It's still lower than using a triple five timer. So if I now bring this uh, to nothing, well when the circuit is forced off, we shoot up to more like 2.3 milliamps because both transistors are now conducting. So each transistor is using about 1.1 milliamps. Okay, it's probably not the most elegant solution, but it's one that will work. And for that 2.3 odd milliamp current draw, that's assuming that the engine's going to be running. Or even in the accessory position uh, with the engine off, considering that the radio is probably going to draw a lot more than that anyway, you know, it's not going to flatten your battery in, in you know, an hour or two hours. So, there we go. The concept works, my implementation works. Um, so... It would have been nice if I could have included the, the Zeno diode in here just to, you know, test the current draw properly. Because the Zeno diode is going to draw about 5MA itself anyway. So, I'm going to put up the quiescent current of the circuit in total uh, of around about 6MA. Uh, thereabouts, in the low state, or high state in this case, LED off. So... Yeah, it may seem like an excessive current draw, but if I was to use a triple five timer, well, that'll be adding an extra probably 7MA to the equation, so it'll be drawing a lot, lot more. Probably twice as much. So, I'm, I'm happy with the, with the results of this. Um, so there's not much more I can really talk about this circuit. Um, I'm just going to pretty much leave it here, and if you enjoyed it, please remember to go down below, like, comment, and subscribe, and, uh, you know, I'll see you in the next one. And this is the Astro 3 saying, as always, see ya, have a flashing day. Okay, yes, that was lame. And just to conclude this video before I go, I forgot to mention during editing I noticed that most modern cars post-2000 have car alarms installed by default. And some of them already have this flasher uh, LED mounted to the dashboard. However, some cars don't. Uh, so this is where this circuit could be uh, implemented is with a car that has a car alarm but no deterrent flasher. So there you go. Anyway, as I said, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.